Greetings, I'm the dentist. Welcome back to Dent Agenda. This is Chapter 3, Pediatric Dentistry. In this tutorial, we will discuss local anesthesia for children. These are the points included in this tutorial. Although there is no scientific evidence to suggest that primary teeth are less sensitive than permanent teeth, clinically it is sometimes possible to complete minimal cavity preparation without local anesthesia, especially on primary anteriors. Nonetheless, Adequate management of a proximal caries in primary molars usually requires local anesthesia. Before we dive in, there are some general principles to consider before we apply local anesthesia. Starting with number one, you should always explain to the patient in terms that they will understand easily what you're trying to do and why you're doing it. Number two, use flavored topical anesthetic gel or spray as 20% benzocaine, for example, to reduce dental phobia and reassure the patient before the needle penetration. Number three, Warm the anesthetic solution to the room temperature only and not higher, as cold solutions may cause more pain during application, especially during the colder months. Number four, use a fine 30 gauge disposable needle for less painful penetration. Note that needles in common medical use range from seven gauge which is the largest, to 33 gauge, which is finest. So as you can see, the larger the number of the needle gauge, the finer it will be. Number five, always have a dental nurse to assist and to help distract the patient. Also, to hand you the syringe away from the patient's sight and help decapping the needle. Number six, hold the mucosa taut for smoother penetration. Number seven, verbal distraction. It can help at the moment of needle penetration. You can use storytelling, counting, or placing a VR box on the patient's eyes. Number eight, use slow rate of injection. If you inject too quickly, the tissue won't adapt to the amount of fluid injected and it will cause the tissue to lice. This causes damage to the tissues and pain to the patient. It's also why patients will have more post-operative discomfort in the injection site. It's also important to watch for any early signs of toxicity as you inject. So the easiest way to prevent that from happening is to inject slowly. Number nine, warn about postoperative numbness and instruct the children and whom they are accompanied with to avoid self-inflected trauma, as lip and tongue biting, chewing or sucking. Before we choose the anesthetic agent, we should be able to read the anesthetic cartridge itself. The total volume, which can be either 1.8 milliliters or 2.2 milliliters, the concentration and type of the anesthetic agent, and the adrenaline concentration, which should be carefully selected depending on the medical condition. Here is the formula to calculate the total amount of the anesthetic agent in a full carpool. The anesthetic agent percentage represents how many milligrams of the anesthetic solution are present per milliliter. For example, of this carpool, 
the concentration of the anesthetic agent is 2%. It means that each milliliter of the cartridge contains 20 milligrams of the anesthetic agent. And as the volume of the cartridge is 1.8 milliliters, the whole cartridge contains 36 milligrams of xylocaine. Then you decide how many cartridges are safe for each patient depending on the body weight and medical condition. Now to the choice of the anesthetic agent itself. The first choice is always lidocaine 2%. Its maximum dose depends on the child body weight and the medical condition. Second choice is brilocaine 3%, which is a higher concentration than lidocaine. Third choice is articaine in 4%, which is the highest concentration. However, articaine is not licensed for children under 4 years old. Greater care is needed to avoid exceeding the maximum dose with articaine, as the volume at the maximum dosage is less than other anesthetic solutions, as it is present in higher concentrations. Some suggest avoiding the use of articaine for blocks, as some evidence suggests greater risk of prolonged anesthesia or paresthesia when articaine is used. Now let's discuss infiltration injection or supraperiosteal injection. Supraperiosteal injection is the most common technique used for obtaining pulpal anesthesia and is more commonly known as local infiltration. It is achieved by floating the small nerve endings with the anesthetic solution in front of each tooth. In this technique, the patient is asked to partially open the mouth and the mucosa is held taut. Syringe is held parallel to the long axis of the tooth and the needle bevel is directed towards the bone to avoid ballooning of the soft tissue. Penetrate the mucosal membrane mesial to the primary molar to be anesthetized, directing the needle to be positioned between the roots of the tooth. Slowly inject a small amount of the anesthetic while advancing the needle to the desired position and injecting about half of the cartridge. If lingual tissue anesthesia is necessary, as in case of rubber dam and clamp placement, then one can inject the anesthetic solution directly into the lingual tissue at the free gingival margin, or you can insert the needle interproximally from the buckle and deposit the anesthesia as the needle is advanced lingually. The needle is withdrawn and recapped using a scooping technique or a needle recapper. Wait three to five minutes before you commence the treatment. Nerve block injection. In this technique, we aim towards the nerve trunk. Inferior alveolar nerve block using thumb and forefinger. Penetrate about one centimeter into lingual tissues from the internal oblique ridge, midway between upper and lower occlusal planes in adults, and about the same level as the occlusal plane in children, as the mandibular foramen is lower on the ramus. Note that an aspiring syringe is essential to avoid injecting into a blood vessel, which will lead to failure of anesthesia and toxicity. Now to some alternative or adjunctive techniques, intraligamentary injection, jet syringe injection, and computer-controlled delivery system. Starting with the intraligamentary injection, these purpose-designed syringes have an ultra-short needle and a gun or pin appearance. This makes it helpful for children with a needle phobia or as a more acceptable alternative or adjunct to the inferior alveolar nerve block. In addition, 
As the lips and tongue are not anesthetized using these techniques, it is useful for young or disabled children in whom there is a greater risk for post-operative soft tissue trauma. Jet syringe injection. This is used to inject local anesthetic solution under pressure through mucosa and bone to a depth of about 1 cm. It is useful for producing soft tissue analgesia prior to conventional local anesthesia injection or for infiltration analgesia, but it is not widely used. Now to the computer controlled delivery system. It allows a careful and controlled slow delivery via a line and needle resembling an IV giving set. Especially useful for direct palatal analgesia, intraligamental analgesia and for anxious patients. And there you have it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dent Agenda for extra tips and tricks.